I thought this was going to be a simple video about for stylists about how not to take their shears apart and how to clean them, but this turned out to be a lot more. <laughs> you may want to watch this video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I saw some things I've never seen before, and um, we'll just walk through it and see if I can fix it. If you're a stylist, how do you clean your shears? Let me give you a big word of warning. <laughs> These shears came in to me today, and they're very clean, and I'm assuming the hairstylist took these apart to clean them. Um, that's the only thing that would explain what I'm seeing here. Now, if you're a sharpener, you should be able to right away recognize there is a problem here. <laughs> um, the number one problem is the shears won't open and close. But you see this screw? It's on upside down. That's problem number one, which this is telling me that the Hairstylists probably took these apart, probably tried to clean them. And I'm going to take this off. That should be what it looks like on top. Underneath here is supposed to be like a little plate to engage with the teeth here. Let me zoom in a little bit more. You can see what I'm talking about. This little piece that should have been in here. You see the do you see the teeth? Those little teeth are supposed to engage into a little piece that we call an internal clicker plate. But <laughs> that was put between the blades. And I'm assuming no sharpener has done that. Now, it's very important you look at this when you take them I didn't apart. Expect this. And I suggest you don't take them apart. There's too many pieces in here. There's even a piece wow. underneath this gotta thing. Get it out. Could they wow. put some glue in there? Get it out. What they do? Glue it in? That's got to come out. I got to do a little hammering here to get this out. I don't want to lose this little piece. That's the internal clicker plate. That was supposed to go in here. And we'll put it back in there after I sharpen it. But this is crazy. I haven't seen this before. Um, I don't want those pieces bouncing off. figure out how to do this. Maybe I'll put it on that. There it goes. There it goes. I got it. Oh, I see what happened. This is a uh, ball bearing washer and it has rusted. And it, This is a ball bearing washer and it's rusted. See the rust on that? See, I wonder if I can replace it. See if I can get something to pry that off. Yeah, it's all rust down inside here. This is what comes if you don't oil your scissors. Or you leave them wet. So I've got a knife here. And I'm just going to try to pry that ball bearing washer out of there without cutting myself. Uh, we have ball bearing washers that we can replace this with. Because I don't think this is going to be any good. Yeah, I thought someone had glued it in, but it was just it was just rusting in there. I think I could just soak this in oil a little while and come back to it. I 
Let's try that. I don't want to lose these pieces here. But I'm going to put this in a little cup. And this is this Tri Flow Superior Lubricant. I might use that. I've got it in a spray and I've got it in a bottle. I'm just going to put some of this in here and let this soak. I got that evapor rust too. Let's try this first and then maybe some evapor rust and uh, we'll try that one next. Yeah, I'm just going to let this sit and then I'm going to go to lunch. I was like, this morning, man, I got a whole bunch of shears to sharpen. And, you know, I said, well, I'll just play some music, sit back there and sharpen. But then I see interesting things. It never gets boring. It's always something, you know, after 30 years of doing this that I've never seen before. And I've never seen one of these ball bearing screws that rusty and get stuck in the shear. <laughs> but I have seen them with the screw put on upside down. And once in a while with that little internal clicker plate between the blades. But... This had all kinds of problems, but, you know, whoever sharpened them last didn't look like they did a bad job, so I've got to think the problems here was from the owner and not the last sharpener. It's not that bad a job on the sharpening. I'll let you look at it. I think it could have been shinier, but a lot of mine could have been shinier. But you see, there's the edge, the original edge on it. You can tell it's been sharpened before, but... It's, I mean, it's not, it's not bad. So, I'll see you after lunch. Hey, Misty's found a new place that we're going to try out. I'll let you know how good it is. So, it's been a lot longer than just lunch. This has been soaking in the vapor rust, and uh, it's still, I can't get it apart. So, what I've done is I blew it off, rinsed it off first, blew it off with my air compressor, and... I'm going to stick this in the oil just so there's no more future rust. But if you look at the inside of this shear, get somewhere you can look at it closer. If you look at the inside, I don't know if you could have seen before, but there was a lot of rust in that hole, and I got all of that out with the vapor rust. So these look good. So that's going to soak while I'm sharpening these blades. So I thought you might enjoy watching me sharpen. Let me move this back, and you can kind of look over my shoulder here. And this one is a, where's the other part of the blade? JW Shear. I'm going to clean it off good with alcohol. And I'm just going to go through my usual sharpening technique. Uh, clean it with alcohol. I color in the edge. Oh, something weird on the end. There. What is that? Is that rust too? Well, it'll come off in the sharpening, whatever that is. Yeah, it looks like a bit of rust right there on the blade. I don't know what they were doing with these shears. Crazy stuff goes on out there. If you're a sharpener, you'll see some of these things. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to create the ride line, my pressure over the pivot hole, up and down, up and down. I've got a nice ride line. And here's talking up there. We just hired a new young lady to help answer the phones. And I'm thinking her brother might come in too and help out with the sharpening. Maybe you'll see them on a video. We hire them young around here. Just makes me feel older. So I'm set at 45. I'm going to leave it at 45. This is my Cymec flat home. If you're new to my channel, I do a lot of videos about sharpening. <laughs> I love to, sh to train sharpeners. I really enjoy it. 
and I'm going to come in here. And this is a convex shear, so I'm rotating to the edge. And the red Sharpie, or the red marker, I don't use a Sharpie anymore. I have a special marker. I can see that I'm all the way to the edge, but it's a little wimpy there at the tip. I'll go a little bit more. That looks good. It's that quick, that easy. And I want to get these shears out today. I've only got one more to do after this one. And I wasn't planning on shooting any videos, but I've had some interesting things come in the door today. Also the... Yep, yeah, looks good. A little bit more on the tip. One thing I want to mention, I see a lot of people when they sharpen, they they're doing a lot of sawing back and forth and they'll get the burr first and they go in and convex it. I like to do it at the beginning. Um, by doing this, I'm taking off less metal at the tip than back here because there's just not as much on the tip. And um, it's a little safer. You kind of, it's a little safer. You kind of, um, have a tendency to lift up if you're going back and forth, whereas I'm rolling, I don't lift up. I see a lot of shears with that tip. It's kind of scooting down. And then after a few sharpenings, it won't even come together. So these kids that we hired, I hope will flatten my stone for me. That's going to be a one of the to-do list. And I'm setting my clamp up a little bit so that when I polish, I polish almost to the edge, but not over the edge. If you polish over the edge, it becomes rounded off. And that should be it. Feels smooth. So I've removed any outside burr. You really don't need to overcomplicate this. You let the machine do the work. Yep, it's nice and smooth. I'll clean it up and put it back together. Now, before I put it together, I had a sharpener that I did his ISSA certification. He was sending me some videos that he saw with another sharpener, another piece of equipment, and he says, wow, he could cut hair with just one blade. And I'm like, well, that's not a big deal. I mean, you see, you can, you can cut hair with just one blade. You don't need both blades. I mean, it's, it's like a knife. You can cut hair with a knife. Um, the key is, are the two blades working toward each other? Are they smooth? Um, Oh, what did I, I was like? What did I do with the screws? And I remember I put it in the oil. Got too much going on today. So I have this soaking in oil. Square peg goes in the round hole. And that. Make sure I have to push that in. There. Did you hear it pop in? And. <laughs> It's nice and greasy. Just want to make sure it's gonna it's gonna turn. Because see, this is the part that has to turn in there. If that doesn't work, I'm gonna have to replace it. I think it's gonna work though. Now, let me let you zoom in here so you can see what I'm doing now. All right, so. Square peg and round hole. The square hole goes on next, and that has to kind of connect in there. And then this is what I call the internal clicker plate. And it has like a little nipple or nose, and that has to be up. This is what the last person put, put between the blades. And then this nut, see those little teeth, that's not decorative. Those connect with that little nose or nipple that sticks up. And this is what the top looks like. So,
and when you get it in there correctly you should hear it go click 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 when it connects and I'm going to kind of test the adjustment without closing them because I want to do the first closing on tissue oh man those felt pretty good I double check my adjustment well I saved these and then let's see if it cuts wet tissue pretty pleased with myself oh yeah oh yeah nice and smooth now the wet tissue tells me whether it is all the burrs are gone all the nicks are gone what tells me if it's sharp you know you're cutting hair you're finding out if it pushes but you could also and I may start doing this on my ISSA just seeing if it will cut hair just the blade by itself so those shears are done and if you want to see some more videos on shear sharpening <laughs> and some strange things I see out there, this one I, I, I suggest this one and there may be some others that you'll find in there if you subscribe to the channel. I usually try to post something about once a week, sometimes more. Depends on what I come across. <laughs>